So back to friend tech. We talked about this uh, in our last, I think in our last uh, episode. Um, it has been on quite a ride, you know, super, super popular, and then its popularity drops through the floor, and then everyone's like, oh, it's dead, and then maybe it's not dead, it's still kind of going, and it's coming back, and everything like that. Well, it made it back into the news uh, this past week because uh, several friend tech users uh, were targeted with a SIM swap attack and lost uh, many ether. Um, so... A SIM swap attack, this really, honestly, it has nothing to do with Frentech. People are trying to connect it to Frentech because it's connected to your Twitter account, uh, and your Twitter account could be then obviously connected to your real person, uh, and your real person could help people figure out what your phone number is. And if they figure out what your phone number is, they can figure out what your uh, uh, phone carrier is. And apparently, if it's Verizon, they're particularly bad about... Uh, social attacks uh, to change someone's uh, 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 carrier or, or their phone number really to a different SIM. Um, because apparently what they do is they either use someone working at a Verizon store or uh, someone calling and just trying to manipulate people. And the way that this one worked um, is that he got just dozens of calls and text messages all just really, really quickly within just a few minutes of each other so that he would put his phone on silent. And then when he put it on silent, what he missed was that he got some messages from Verizon saying, hey, you know, we're ready to talk to you soon. And another one, and this one's the real security vulnerability here, um, there's a request to access your account, blah, 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 please confirm or deny here. He never responded to it. And they apparently just treat it like if you don't get back to them within a few minutes, they just assume it's, it's honest. Wow. Really dumb. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So this really has very little to do with friend tech, except for the fact that, well, I guess be, because friend tech kind of revealed uh, that this particular user had X many keys and thus those many keys were worth this much, you know, either it made it clear uh, uh, what would yield if you attacked this particular uh, uh, cell phone. I mean, um, the thing is here is that SIM swap attacks have been going yeah. going on way back. You said Verizon is particularly bad, but AT&T was the one connected with uh, Michael Turpin's mm. um, SIM swap his was attack. Verizon too. Okay. And it was in, I mean, how many years ago did that attack mm, three, happen? Four years ago like, at least. Yeah. I feel like it was way Wonder back, yeah. 18, 17, 18, I don't know. But it was, you know, these attacks are the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's just it, friend tech was how they discovered who to target. In Turpin's case, he's a celebrity within the crypto space. A whole right, lot of people exactly. that are especially traders where they like kind of brag about how much they've made. All they're doing is letting people know how much it would be worth to pull off an attack that you can't really protect. Like your carrier is not going to be as good at protecting your identity as you will most likely i would say <laughs> yeah it's I, I don't know what's what are, what's the solution well the article ends with a suggestion what some friend tech users think would be the solution adding to fa i don't get how that would because because if if, if an attacker has taken over basically right. through a sim swap your phone number now there's different versions of 2FA. So maybe it's just that the writer of this particular article kind of conflated them in a way that made it not really true. Because if you do 2FA over SMS, then the attack would have been valid, would have worked anyway, because mm -hmm. the attacker would have received the actual, the, the, the 2FA code. Using a code-based one, an authentication service where it's not tied to your phone number, it's not coming over, over uh, SMS, but it's being generated by your device cryptographically or anything else like that, could certainly be the solution because no one can get that remotely if it's being stored in your password manager, assuming that your password manager is secure. Um, honestly, I don't know. A lot of people are acting like the real danger there is that because uh, friend tech is connected to Twitter accounts and Twitter accounts can easily be doxxed or everyone within Twitter or X has the whole database. So even if you have an anonymous account, so it definitely brings up the, the, the issue of the importance of anonymous accounts, even on web two, mm -hmm. not just in web three. Mm -hmm. um, like people, some, a lot of people argue like there's just no valid reason for, for, for anonymity. Someone that has bootstrapped themselves from a paperclip up to a hundred thousand dollars by just being a really smart trader has plenty of reason to be to have anonymity because obviously the carriers don't do a very good job of protecting against sin swaps. And so completely outside of your control, you can lose access to the thing that protects your money. Obviously, best thing you could do is just keep it on an actual, you know, offline cold wallet 
in your safe, anything else like that, but you can't be doing anything active with it if you're doing that. So I don't know. It's a tough call. It's a very tough call, but it, it, it definitely points to the fact that some of the biggest weaknesses within crypto security have nothing to do with Web3 itself. They yeah. have to do with cell carriers. Yeah. They have to do with Web2 platforms so on and so forth. And that's that's unfortunate, but something we have to deal with. And maybe it just will give incentive for those platforms to adopt Web3 functionality sooner than they would otherwise, because right now they are they are very insecure vectors of attack. 